I was just talking to you, I was saying to Azania, I was like, oh my God, I remember we started with seven, seven colors. colors. And I was saying, Ego, nobody's gonna come. They're gonna go seven colors. And she said, trust me, we're gonna convince them. <laughs> and that's what we did. You know, we opened up, but I promise you, it was like, you know, nobody even saw the seven colors. Enjoyed the atmosphere at Morningside. I lived around the corner, loved the two ladies. It was just great. And I thought, I want, I want, I want. And they were courteous enough, gracious enough to say, okay, they're ready for the growth as well because they'd grown this business to the point where it was. We had this product, so where to next? What does the future hold next? And so we were outside at Ego's house, you know, throwing ideas, throwing ideas, thinking, thinking. You know, and some ideas were like ridiculous, some were great, some were too small, some were too big. And then eventually I just said, oh, oh, what we recognized was that we needed distribution. We needed, we needed distribution that was beyond our salons. We only had two sites, so we needed multiple sites. We needed to reach more women, women in Durban, women in Cape Town, women in Polokwane, women wherever. We needed, it was built for success. Everything about this business was built for success with this plan. Almost, we, were, we were living off the energy of what was happening. We were feeding off it. And so we went into the following year, 2017, we were saying, come into Santon, come into Oar Tambo, come into, what was it, East Gate, then Gateway followed. And all the while, we are getting product from Washington, having to send it to South Africa, having to package ourselves because we soon realized that we didn't have the human capital, we didn't have the human resources to be able to deal with the fast growth that we're experiencing. And we soon realized that we needed not only people to help us look after the salons, solid, brilliant managers within the salons that can host our clients, because you don't just come and do nails, we host you. You're part of the family. You're there to relax, you need to feel at home. At first, we wanted people who cared as much about the business as we do, but you're not going to find them. So you have to maybe step down your expectation a little bit and accept people who care enough about themselves and their jobs to give their best in your business. If we are going to continue to staff them, how quickly can we grow? I mean, can we open 20 more outlets in a year? How are we going to open 100 more? We want to be in 500 outlets. How are we going to do that if we're promising to staff all of them? One of the learnings from my many years in business is that we register every single business of ours under a se separate PTY. Make sure you do that and make sure you keep their bank accounts separate and make sure you keep all the business of each entity separate. They can, they can trade under the same brand name, Parker Salon PTY, trading as Miss Salon London, you know, and et cetera, so that when you have to close or, you know, if anything happens to any one of the businesses, it doesn't have to affect the others. The best business decisions we've ever made, the best business relationships we've ever built, mm. the best business all came through a very easy mm. flow. You work hard, but it's with ease. Mm. What advice would the ladies give me in terms of growing my spa in Durban first? And also, um, what should I honestly be looking for into partnerships? Every single customer, one by one, must leave your shop delighted. Oh my God, what was this? Oh, I can't wait to come back. Yeah, get a really good camera or a nice phone and just take lots of pictures of your of shop. Of actual happenings in yeah. your shop. And post it, post it, post it six times a day. A few times, Linda, when you were talking about what you've built, you kept saying, we created this thing that everybody wanted to be a part of. How? When you look back, right, when you, with the benefit of hindsight, with all the challenges and the stress and the breakdown, when you think about the brand and the following and the love and Wu as lady calling you and saying, you're making waves in Gauteng, how do you think you did that? Do you look back and go, I can see a few features of how I could package that and share with other people. We were selling, we believed in it. We, we loved what, we still love what we're selling. 
would I, I live my I mean I can tell you now I've come off I was 24 hours in the shop no sleep I literally went home at 9 a.m to go and shower and get to the airport because of this refurb but that's how much I love it I didn't go oh my god tomorrow I'm going to Durban so I, I need to go and get some shut eye I was there so that I could oversee what's going on and come here. So I love what I'm, I love what I do. And do you think clients see through that? Like if it's not authentic, Absolutely. if you don't love it? Absolutely, they do. Another round of applause for Ego, Linda and Asania. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you can you, take your seat. You.